eat bold with Subway Fiery Footlong Subs. So hot they'll burn the wimp right out of you. Try the new Turkey Jalapeno Melt, a fiery twist on a legendary flavor, and the bold, delicious buffalo chicken, backed by popular demand. Subway, eat fresh. The BS Report is a free-flowing conversation that occasionally touches on mature subjects. First of all, this is the BS Report with Bill Simmons. It might be cool, I don't know. And if it's not, I don't care. The BS Report with Bill Simmons. Bill Simmons works for ESPN. He's also named the sports guy, and he writes a comical sports column. He must be a popular dude. The BS Report. It's got a real dirty sound. Like a rusty steak knife cutting through a well aged steak. No. 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 Here's Bill Simmons. Welcome to the BS Report. Sunny day here in Southern California. Actually, a little warm today. A guy who used to live here on the Subway Fresh Steak Highline, actually in studio. Our lead fantasy guy, our old friend, Matthew Berry. Um, What's the weather like in Bristol, just out of curiosity? It's nice. It is? It's actually nice. No, thank you, Joe Mead. Joe Mead just came in to offer me a brownie. God, what service? Is it a pot brownie? I don't know. He does seem happy and animated, which is very different than Joe Mead's normal behavior. It's so much better than, you know, the producer of my podcast, Pod Vader, the Fantasy Focus podcast. He never offers brownies for the guests. Hey, hey Joe, Barry's mic sounds a little high. I don't Should I jack mine up? No, no. Don't no? jack yours up. Oh, All right. We'll, okay. We'll All right. watch the levels and we'll sort it out. If uh, I thought I'd bring it up since you obviously took pot brownies and you probably didn't notice, <laughs> probably just zoned out sitting there. Um, well, fantasy. Yeah. A lot of people have in their drafts this week. What do you think the more common weekend is, this weekend or Labor Day weekend? Probably this one, right? I think this one's a big one. Labor Day's ideal, but a lot of people go away with their families and the kids and everything like that. So I think this is the big weekend. Yeah, and you get uh, you get the week three preseason. You get to look at those if you're having right. the draft on Sunday. You at least get to bang a couple of those out. But not a lot of movement from the spring and summer to now with the top four looking at it. Seems no. like Johnson. Well, what are your Peterson, hey? What are your drafts? Are you uh, are you doing the West Coast League again? And the doing uh, yeah, then doing the two coasts. I wanted to get out of one of them, but I just I, I just couldn't do it without uh, severely angering people. So I'm doing them right before the season that week, the Monday and the Tuesday before. We would wait as late as possible. I like it. But um, so the top four, Johnson, Peterson, Mojo, and Rice in some order, with Johnson being first, that seems to be still the consensus, right? Uh, That's generally the consensus. It's not my consensus. I actually have Frank Gore at number four. You do? I'm higher on Frank Gore than a lot of people, yeah. Well, he seems like he's the polarizing first-round draft choice this year. Uh, I think he's one of them. I think Steven Jackson, people have questions about with him. Uh, there's also questions about how early do you take a quarterback? Where should Drew Brees fall into the, in, uh, in the first round? Is Randy Moss a first rounder? Those are, I think, some of the, quote, first round questions. We're going to, for this podcast, we're going to talk about all this stuff in terms of rounds because just not enough people are doing auctions yet, much to my chagrin. I think five years from now, we're, our country will be about 75% auction. But right now, I'd say it's one out of every three or four. Auctions are like the drafts of the future, kind of like Dippin' Dots or the ice cream of the future? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Auctions and are the drafts of the future. I agree. I mean, you and I keep uh, banging that drum. And, uh, you know, it's if you haven't tried it, try it. It's a lot of fun. They're easy to do. But We're making progress. I'm getting more and more emails about it. And I, it's much like podcasts with, with uh, terrestrial radio. Yes. Very Same true. Same thing. Podcasts eventually, I think, will be a much bigger deal. Same for auctions. Um, Chris Johnson, what's his ceiling? Is it? I mean, will he be considerably better than every other running back? I think he could be. He certainly was last year. I mean, he was like 50 points better in terms of ESPN standard scoring. And by the way, when we talk about scoring in rounds, we'll just it's easier to do it. ESPN standard scoring, which is uh, four points for a touchdown pass, one point uh, every 10 yards rushing receiving. Six points for a regular touchdown, a non-passing touchdown, and uh, ten team leagues. That's the kind of the standard way we play on ESPN. So non-point per reception. Got it. Uh, with that standard scoring last year, yeah, Johnson was the not only the best fantasy running back, but like 50 points better, which is significant yeah. uh, than Peterson was last year. I think last year was his ceiling, maybe a little bit better, but I don't know that he does you know that much better than 2,500 total yards and all those long runs. That said, I think he's got 
a pretty good chance at repeating it. It's uh, you know I have him at number one. And I think most people do as well. When Vince started, when Vince took hold of that job, did that make him more productive or less or the same? I can't remember. Uh, it. It, uh, more productive. I mean, okay. Johnson had a monster second half of the season. I, he was already great, but yeah, I mean, Vince Young gives them a mobility that, and uh, you know, a little bit, a little bit more of an offensive threat that they can't just focus on Johnson as much. I mean, I don't know if you've been watching any of the preseason games, but they're like they're running the option. They're going. Mm. <laughs> I mean, they're college old school. I mean, and they can do that when you've got a guy like Vince Young and Chris Johnson, obviously, and so, you know. I'm excited to watch them. Actually, it's one yeah. of the teams that I think are just going to be just plain fun to watch. Um, I think I'm with be you sneaky on, good. I'm with you on Johnson, and I think this is yet another example of why we need an auction because you shouldn't just luck into a guy who's 50 points yes. better than everybody else because you drew the ace in a deck. Yeah, that's stupid. Obviously, with an auction, you everyone's got a shot at Chris Johnson. There's much more strategy involved. It's a lot more fun. It's more skill. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't think that the number one – I don't think a fantasy draft is won or lost in the first round. Obviously, it's 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 the sleepers. It's the guys you get late. It's yeah. staying uh, injury-free and getting a little bit lucky towards throughout the season. But uh, no question. No question. Well, it, it sucks when you don't have pick one. Chris Johnson last year is a good example of getting a little bit lucky because he was somebody who was in – you know, the 8 to 13 range, I think, heading into people's drafts. I took Tomlinson over him in oh. one draft, which oh. is, I there it I, is. That's my season. Right. there. You, I was absolutely correct. I think I had Johnson at 7 or 8 last yeah. year. So, uh, you know, off the top of my head, I loved Chris Johnson. I loved him first time I saw him in the very first preseason game. The concern with Johnson last year and why he wasn't higher than 7 was Lendo White, was big, yep. fat Lendo White, who is always going to be big, fat Lendo White, no matter how much weight he loses. Was he going to be a, a touchdown vulture? People thought he was going to. Obviously, he, he didn't, or not enough that it mattered. Adrian Peterson, you know, I this Minnesota team, it just looks like, you know, Rice is out for half the year. Favre's got the injured ankle. They're a little older. They made, they traded for Greg Camarillo today. <laughs> right. Well, People and, are saying Vasante Shanko is going to be Favre's number one receiver. How does well, this affect you, Peterson? You didn't even mention Percy Harvin's migraines. And Percy yeah. Harvin's migraines. I forgot. You're right. Um, how does all of this affect Peterson, good or bad? I think he's still running behind a pretty good offensive line. He's still a beast. I think he's still number two, but... Uh, you'd have to be a little concerned. I'm definitely downgrading Favre because of the Rice injury news. I have him as number 10. Uh, I had him at number 8 originally. I'm his number 10. I think his ankle is, uh, you know, not 100%. Stefania Bell's been talking about it, and, you know, it's an arthritic ankle, and you can't cure arthritis. And he's old. Yes, he is very old. And he has the Saints in Week 1 and then Miami in Week 2, which I don't think is going to be an easy game. No, and the other thing is, is that everything went right for Favre last year. Yep. I mean, every schedule, right? And you know, he had his career low in interceptions at age forty. I mean, do you really think, having knowing the bulk of Favre's career, do you really think he throws single digit interceptions this year? Especially yeah. now with Rice out, Harvin with the migraines, he's going to be in and out of the lineup. Barian is, you know, Barian becomes a sleeper to me. I like him a lot, but struggled with hamstring injuries last year. Is he going to be able to stay healthy? There's do you a lot like of red it, flags here? Do you like Barry and more or less after uh, it was revealed that he's beat twice during the Chad Ochocinco <laughs> dating show? Uh, I like him more. I like, I like him, more. him more too, yeah. and, and I love the nickname "Beat Twice." I'm so mad that any of my friends who have same initial first name last name we never thought of the initial with twice. Yeah, that's a that's a big miss. That's yeah. a that's a big miss. Listen, anyone that appears on the Chad Ochocinco dating show uh, <laughs> uh, goes up, up around. <laughs> Uh, who did, so you have Rice third, and then you have Frank Gore over I have, Mojo. I have Frank Gore over Mojo. Uh, no, no, I have, no, I have uh, Jones Drew at three, Gore oh. at four, Rice at five, Turner at six. Oh, so you go running back for the first six. Correct. You're not worried at all about Michael Turner? Maybe this is the year that we, he falls off a cliff, a la Larry Johnson, a la no. some of these other guys. No, 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 no. Uh, last, last year, Turner was terrific. The problem with Turner, obviously, was the, was the injuries. Hurt. Yeah. Was the injuries, but at 10 scores in nine games. He had 10 touchdowns in nine games. He also got a good, got a good fact for you here. He had more... If you combine him and Jason Snelling, okay, and it's not the same thing, but go with him for a second. If you com combine Michael Turner and Jason Snelling last year, who took over for Turner when he went down, they had more individual rushes of 20 yards or more 
than any running back in the NFL other than Chris Johnson. Hmm. And to me, I think that speaks both to the talent of, of Turner and Snelling, but specifically to the ability of the Falcons' offensive line. That's a really good running offensive line that can sort of, sort of spring those backs. And, and they, they had a harder schedule last year, and some yeah. things go wrong, and some bad breaks, and it seems like this year... I think it's, an, it's a nice schedule for Atlanta. Yeah, nice bounce back. And the other thing them. is, and this is a dumb little thing, that, but you know, they, they always talk about they want Turner to get more involved in the passing game. And the, the other preseason game, he caught like something like two balls for nine yards, and you're like, really, that's what gets you excited? Not yeah. really, but just the fact is, if he can catch 25 balls, not undoable. If he can catch, two, like, 220 yards. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, something like that, right? And yeah. you know, maybe maybe he gets one receiving touchdown or something like that. I I just feel if he's going to be on the field for third down at least some of the time, that, you know, I'm a believer. He's coming to camp uh, in in great shape. He looks good. He knows that he's got a chip on his shoulder from last year. It was a disappointing year. It's still a run first team and a run second team. Uh, I think Turner's due for a very very big year, and they've talked about how they want to get him the ball more as a pass catcher. I'm looking at this cheat sheet that we have on ESPN.com. Okay. Ryan Mine Matthews. is different. Mine is different from that one. That one's the consensus of like everyone. No, no, I ranked. know it's a consensus, yeah. but this one has Ryan Matthews 13th, and I, I just shouldn't he be in the top eight? Or am I crazy? I think you're a little crazy. I personally little have, crazy. I have him at, at 19. I have him as my 13th best running back. Look. It's a great situation. He's obviously your top rookie. Norv Turner has told the San Diego Union Tribune that he wants uh, Matthews to get 290 touches, about 250 carries, 40 touches. He says Sproles is going to c- continue the third down, um, uh, the th- the, uh, the third down role that he had last year. Look, you have concerns on that offensive line, especially if Marcus Manil doesn't come back. Uh, so I think there's that. The fact is he's also a rookie. There's some talk about Tolbert maybe taking some goal line carries. I'm not sure I buy that. Listen, I like Matthews a lot. I think he's a good late second round pick. I think 13's a little bit too high. Again, he's a rookie, and you just so never you know. Top, so you think top eight's way too high then? I think top eight's way too high. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Here's here's my thing, and I'll just say I think running backs. This is my sort of theory for this year. I think you want at least one, and ideally two, elite wide receivers in the first five rounds. And I think you definitely want one at least wide receiver in the first three rounds, and ideally two in the first five. All right, hold that thought for one second. Okay. I'm going to count down the receivers. You tell me when we've crossed the elite line and we're no longer talking about elite guys. Okay. Andre Johnson, yep. Randy Moss, Fitzgerald, Reggie Wayne, Brandon Marshall, Roddy White, Calvin Johnson, Miles Austin, Deshaun Jackson, there. Steve Smith. Right there. Yeah, I would put Steve Smith of Carolina in that group, and I would take Deshaun Jackson out. I'm also, by the way, a number of those guys that you mentioned, I don't love this year. We can mm. go through why in, in, in well, a second. Well, when we say elite, so you're saying there's nine guys, the top eight that I just listed, plus Steve Smith replacing Deshaun Jackson. Yeah. Okay. And would, nobody, Jennings, Colston, Smith, I, Bolden, I would. Ocho, I have Jennings. none of those guys. I have Jennings in that list. I have a couple guys out, but yeah. So you have ten. Well, I wouldn't put... I wouldn't. I'm down on Wayne Fitzgerald. I, I'm down on Wayne. I don't think he's an elite guy this year. Um, I, I'm very concerned about Fitzgerald and Marshall, uh, but I would probably put them in. They're in, they're definitely in my top ten. So well, I, I, I would. I agree Jenny. with you. I think that this is red flags galore. I'm, yeah. I mean, you're going at these individually, and I want to go back to running backs, but just quickly, Johnson. I think feel good about Done. Moss. <sighs> I don't know. A little nervous. They they have these tight ends that they're going to love throwing to. I don't know if they're going to go to them as many times as they did. Um, Fitzgerald, after watching Leonard in that oh. exhibition game, I, I don't. And he, he's and a little, little banged up. And no Anquan Bolden. No question about it. And here's the other thing about Fitzgerald: last year, three year low in yards per catch. The the touchdowns masked the fact that you, you didn't really notice that his yards per catch were going down. But he didn't have a great a great, quote-unquote, Larry Fitzgerald-type year last year. Again, he scored a lot, so you didn't really mind. He didn't have a lot of big plays, right, right. if I remember? Yeah, that's correct. Um, Wayne, not, I think, not, I mean, fine. you know, for him. I, I, yeah. It all has to be under the, you know, the, the Larry Fitzgerald thing. He was, you know, he was the number one fantasy wide receiver drafted last year. He finished fifth in scoring, um, just three points ahead of Reggie Wayne. And now just had a huge quarterback drop-off. Huge and quarterback had drop-off. the guy taking attention away is now gone. Correct. I, I worry I'm about him. very nervous about Fitzgerald. Uh, Reggie Wayne, I think he's fine. Brandon Marshall. Really? I'm not at all. Reggie Wayne really? is one of my stay-away guys. Oh. 
How come? A couple of reasons why on uh, on Reggie Wayne. Okay, first off, I don't know if you remember, but we talked about this on the baseball podcast when we did a fantasy baseball podcast at the beginning of the year. And yes. the thing the thing I said about John Lackey was, I said, listen. I'd rather be a year too early off the bandwagon than a year too late. Yeah, I remember that. So yeah. that I felt like he sort of hit a wall. And So who gets his catches I, then? I, Pierre Garçon. Over the final, if you take out week 16 and 17, okay? Mm-hmm. So if you take out week 16 and 17, that's, that's when, you know, obviously that uh, the Colts took everything off. So just throw those out. and then you, But you add the the playoffs, okay? So... Go with me here for a second. Taking out yep. week 16 and 17 when none of the Colts starters really played very much, and you add the playoffs, Reggie Wayne had single-digit fantasy points in seven of his final nine games. Seven of his final nine. Hmm. Um, his, he had 12.6 yards per catch last year. That was his lowest since 2003. He had only seven plays last year of 25 yards plus. In 2008, he had eight such plays. In 2007, he had 16. He is slowing down. He's no longer their big play threat. How many years is he? Is he like nine years, ten years? I can't remember. I believe that's right. Last year, um, I can look it up. I can look it up for you. But last year, Pierre Garçon, uh, by coincidence, had 12 plays of 25 yards plus. He's their deep threat. Hmm. And now he's been a, he's he's got this undisclosed illness or whatever or something that he hasn't been in camp lately. But I'm not worried about Garcon. Every, everything we're hearing is he's going to start the season. He'd be fine. And we uh, have Anthony Gonzalez. You've got Anthony back Gonzalez. Too. You've got Austin Collie. You've obviously got Dallas Clark. Uh, right. Joseph Adai is a great pass catcher. They you want to get Donald Brown more involved. I I think Wayne will be good. I don't think he'll be great. Last year, coming out of the bye week, one more stat for you. Last year, coming out of the bye week. Um, which is so starting in week seven through the Super Bowl again, taking out week sixteen and seventeen. Reggie Wayne had nine hundred and fifteen yards and seven touchdowns. Pierre Garcon eight hundred yards, four touchdowns. He had basically fifteen yards more a game per week than Pierre Garcon. Uh, listen, uh, Wayne had a lot more receptions, and you can argue that Manning looks for more. I don't know. For to where are you gonna you're gonna have to draft Reggie Wayne in the in the second round, maybe top of the third. And seven single-digit fantasy points in seven out of nine games, that's just not the kind of production I want for where I'm going to have to draft Wayne. I think he's fourth-round production that you have to take in the second. So we're ru- we're running out of elite receivers pretty yeah. quickly here. Brandon Marshall couldn't make me more nervous. I, yeah. I hate when big receivers switch teams. It just The, the track record is just not good in general. I mean, they, there have been success stories, but a lot of the times it's like the guy is never the same. New system, new quarterback, has to face Darrell Rivas twice because I think Rivas is going to sign. He's uh, crazy. He's crazy. Uh, and, you know, injury history as well. You know, a little banged up with the. Uh, so. And then another guy like that who, you know, at this point, I, I need to see him do it for a year before I take him in the first two rounds is Calvin Johnson. Stay healthy for a year and, and put up some stats. How about that idea? Yeah, I I like Calvin Johnson. I think I have him at five uh, among my wide receivers. So I I like him a lot this year. Uh, I think he will take that next step. I think uh, Nate Burleson being there will help take some attention away. I think Stafford, you know, having uh, take <laughs> <Nate> another <Burleson. laughs> year. Yeah, Nate Burleson. <laughs> Come Absolutely, on. Nate Burleson. It, uh, Nate Burleson. Stop is, it. Hang on, Nate Burleson. No, I'm not stopping it. Nate Burleson. Is playing in a Scott Linehan offense uh, with a big name wide receiver opposite him, just like he did in Minnesota when he scored nine touchdowns with Randy Moss next to him. That was in 1994. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago. But hey, listen, I, obviously, you're not talking to me in a Calvin Johnson. I'm t- I've I've had him. I think I, I two understand of the four that. years, and I think job at best. I think that's going to be a much better offense. Show than me you can realize. stay in the field. I think that's one of these things that, and I think Anquan Bolden's the same way. These guys that they look awesome on paper, and it's like, ah, oh, well, he was hurt last year. And you know what? If somebody keeps getting hurt, I'm sensing a pattern after a while. You can't stay in the field. There is no question that Calvin Johnson is huge risk reward because there is a concern. Listen, he's had, I think, uh, I think the stat is five touchdowns or less in two of his three pro pro years. Mm. So, uh, listen, there there are lots of potential red flags, but I think he, there's also a, a decent chance he's the number one fantasy wide receiver at the end of the year. I well, like see, I like Johnson at five. I like these t- next two guys more than everyone we've mentioned except for Andre Johnson. Uh, Roddy White, who held out last mm-hmm. year and it kind of screwed him up. I think he just 
Totally agree. I have year. him as my number four fantasy wide receiver. Yeah, I would even put him two or three. And then I think Miles Austin does it again. I have Miles Austin at number three. Yeah. Love Miles Austin. I would have that. I, the, my, the three that I feel the best about are Andre Johnson and then Miles Austin and Roddy White in some order. Um, Maybe I'm crazy. No, I, I, completely agree, I completely agree with you. And then I, I put Moss four. Um, man, I, oh, it would be tough to take Larry Fitzgerald in the, in the first two rounds after watching Liner and then knowing that Derek Anderson's the backup. I just don't know how he'd bounce back from that. Here's my wide receiver rankings. I'll, I'll okay, give them to you. I, Andre Johnson, Randy Moss, then I have Miles Austin at three. Uh, people forget, I, just to back up what you're talking about here, Last year, Miles Austin was the number three fantasy wide receiver, despite the fact that he didn't even start until week yeah. five. He had he missed a month, and he was still. To me, I he am, has to be top three or four. I am all in on the Cowboys this year as an elite fantasy offense. Like I think yeah. they take the step to being kind of in the Colts, Saints, what the Vikings were last year. I think they're gonna. I think Romo's gonna have a monster year. I think uh, getting Des Bryant there. I think Felix Jones finally stays healthy this year. Marion Barber. People hate him too much. You've obviously still got Jason Witten there. I think the Cowboys are poised to have a huge fantasy season just all the way around. Um, so hey, how about uh, let's, let's Miles jump. Austin, then I have Roddy White, then I have uh, uh, then I have Calvin Johnson, and then I have somebody that I talked about just a second ago, Greg Jennings. Same yeah. thing, Packers. I think the Packers are going to have a monster year. Greg Jennings, interesting stat for you here on Jennings. Over the last two years, again, I think touchdowns are hard to predict, you know? Yeah. But over the last two years, there have been only two wide receivers in the NFL that have had at least five 100-yard receiving games each of the last two seasons. One of them's Andre Johnson. The other is Greg Jennings. And He's a fun guy least, to have on your team. Yeah. I, he, last year, the problem was he had only four touchdown passes. Um, but I feel like that's a bit of a fluke. I feel like if he can get into the 9-12 to 12 range, which is what we've seen him do, uh, previously, you know, a couple years before, then I, I think he's, you know, potentially a, a top five or six fantasy wide receiver this year. So and it's always fun to it. it's always fun to have the Green Bay guys because when they score at home, they do the Lambo leap. It's like the little cherry in the Sunday. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, jumping in the stands, baby. Always fun to have the Lambo leap. All right, let's zoom through. So it sounds like you're a little down on Deshaun Jackson. I'm very down on Deshaun Jackson. How come? I actually I did a bold predictions piece on uh, dot com called You Heard Me, and I. One of one of my bold predictions was Jeremy Macklin has a better fantasy year than Deshaun Jackson. Hmm. Uh, you know, it, actually, Nate and I talked about that on the podcast. And here's why I'm down on Deshaun Jackson. He needs big plays to score. 41st last year in terms of red zone targets. So uh, this is a guy that needs to, you know, frankly, score long plays. And if he doesn't score the, the way he did last year in terms of the touchdowns, right? So, like, if in, instead of... Let's see what. Uh, so you're saying take away three his take away, three sixty two yard touchdowns and all of a sudden he's pretty freaking ordinary. Right. I mean take away like I, I'm trying to think how many return touchdowns he had last year. I think he had uh, two. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, I think it, I think he had two. Um, so anyway, like, but if you take away that and suddenly he's down to six or seven touchdowns instead of you know in the ten to twelve range. He's not an ordinary fantasy wide receiver, but he's just a good fantasy wide receiver. I, one of the columns I did, I did a comparison of him, where I compared 2005 Santana Moss to 2006 Santana Moss. Sp speed, speed guys that require big plays for their fantasy points, there's a there's definite risk there because they're not getting the red zone look. So, and I, I sort of feel like defensive coordinators spend the off season looking at, okay, we know we've got Philly on our schedule. What do we got to do? All right, well, we've got to protect against the deep ball to Sean Jackson. I don't know. I just think Macklin's, uh, I think Macklin's going to have the better year. He's going to get more balls. He's certainly going to get more looks in the red zone as will Selleck. I like Deshaun Jackson. I just think where he's going is a bit too high. And Steve Smith just run its course. I actually like Steve Smith. Steve oh. Smith is actually fairly consistent. I, Feels like that means you like Matt Moore, then. I do like Matt Moore. Uh, four games that Matt Moore and Steve Smith played together, uh, you know, had three touchdowns and something like uh, I want to say almost 600 yards off the top of my head. Uh, right. Actually, I I actually think Matt Moore could be decent this year. So give me your favorite out of this group: Steve Smith, uh, Steve Smith, Giant Steve Smith, mm -hmm. Anquan Bowden, Ocho, Sims Walker, Crabtree, Hines Ward, Derek Bow, and Driver. 
really like. Uh, I think I'm actually a Dwayne Bow guy this year. Um, it's Steve Smith of Carolina is the guy of that group, but uh, a couple of guys jump out at me. I really like uh, Crabtree this year. I'm all in on the 49ers too. Those are I've got a couple of teams that I just really like from a fantasy perspective. Bad division. Horrible. That's help it's a great schedule. Yeah. It's a great schedule, and this is one of the reasons why I'm a, I I have Gore at number four overall. So I listen. I know the concerns about Alex Smith, and certainly his accuracy. There's question marks there, right? But I, I think Crabtree, I think the entire 49ers offense, forget, people forget last year, that was a team that was really in transition. Alex Smith didn't take over till week eight. Crabtree didn't show up till week seven. Gore missed three games. Uh, Joe Staley, their best offensive tackle, missed seven games. Uh, Vernon Davis, you know, took a while to wake from his slumber. All of a sudden, I think it was, you know, game seven, actually, Alex Smith's first game. I think that's right. It was the the Houston game was when Vernon Davis kind of really sort of woke up and for the rest of the season was. Well, wait a stud. second though. If you like Gore and you like Crabtree and you like Vernon Davis because he was good last year, yep. doesn't that have to mean that you might like Alex Smith? Yeah, I like him somewhat. I think I think you'll see some. Uh, I, I have him ranked higher than I think probably most people do. I, I think there's a lot of concerns about Alex Smith. I actually like him. That's an understatement. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I I like him more than others. There are other quarterbacks that I like more than him, but uh, and I think he'll turn the ball over some. And uh, but yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I like Alex Smith. Listen, I'm all in on the 49ers this year. You know, it's funny. Every year there's a receiver that holds out, and he becomes the fantasy grenade that where he could go from round three to round seven. Yep. And you don't know if you take him, and then the next day he's going to sign. And this year it's Vincent Jackson. <sighs> he's a tough one. Because that's absolutely right. All the skill in the world. And if he goes to, I mean, there's talk about Washington. If he goes there with McNabb, I think he becomes really interesting. Uh, and as a Redskins fan, you know, I would love that. Uh, you know, it, but I don't think he plays at San Diego other than the minimum. I will yeah. say, I will. Well, I remember Joey Galloway in '99 oh. was the first guy yeah. who just destroyed people's roto teams, including mine. And don't ask me why I remember that 11 years later, later but I do. Oh, Screw you, Joey. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's what fantasy is about. You remember yeah. it? Listen, I, you know, whatever. The Dante Culpepper year. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, that that was a whole column for me. Yeah. I wrote about the fantasy fantasy support meeting. Oh my god. My two favorite guys on this list that I'm looking at the uh, the cheat sheet. Welker is 24, and Garcon is 26. I think we're too low on both guys. Yeah, that is like, because I think Welker, you know, people get scared off by the ACL, and with reason, most of the time you should be. But in this case, all he did was damage that one ligament. They fixed it. He was at minicamp in May. He's feels like he's almost 100% now, and I just think some people have the bodies to bounce back, and he's one of those guys. I have Welker as my number 14 wide receiver overall. So. And Garcon, you have much higher than 26, I'm guessing. Uh, yes, I do. I, Anybody else? Like, you like Steve Breston? You like Barry in a little? I like Barry in a little. Lee Evans? Uh, Lee Evans? Did you really say? Oh, no. Uh, there's a lot of wide receivers. I I'm like, looking at this group. All right. Oh, at this, um, I think we're too high on those guys. Uh, I like Dwayne Bowe a lot, just going up a little bit higher. I like Dwayne Bowe. I think he showed up in camp in shape. I think he's got something to prove. I think, you know, we've seen Charlie Weiss have success with, uh, shall we say, Enigmatic wide receivers. Yeah. Um, so I like him. I'm not crazy about Mike Sims Walker. I know a lot of people are. I think we're too, I think we're too high on him. The hyphen. He was really inconsistent last year. Really I'm not a inconsistent, fan. and it, it, it's a team that, other than Maurice Jones Drew, I don't know that I totally trust. Although I think Mike Thomas is an interesting sleeper in deeper leagues. Uh, I'm and by the way, I'm not a Chad Ochocinco guy. You know, uh. listen. You like him? Listen, listen. Chad Ochocinco can be my wingman, but uh, I I don't want him on my fantasy team. Uh, you don't like Tiocho? I don't know. I don't like Tiocho. Did we decide on that? Is that what we're going with? <laughs> I've been going with it. Lately. I like it. Feels it. good. Yeah, it feels um, good. I first off, I think Carson Palmer just does not look like you know the if he didn't have the name Carson Palmer. Yeah, if his name was like Jack Stanley. Yeah, I just he was awful. If last his year. name was J P. Lossman. It you remember how bad he was? Well, remember how bad he was in the Jets playoff oh, game? Brutal, brutal. Hard to shake that one. And then they they always have to claim afterwards that they, oh well he was hurt. Oh he was. My concern on Chad Ochocinco here here they are. First off, last year fairly poor down the stretch. Again, I don't think you can predict touchdowns. They're so hard to predict. They come and go. 
remember, you know, the Brandon Stokely 10 touchdown year, you know, is, is like kind of the, the, the best example of that. You can never predict whether they're coming or going. So I like to look at targets. I like to look at yardage. Last year, he had only one 100-yard receiving game over the final nine games. Just really tough down the stretch. He's So now you're saying, okay, we got to count on scoring for Chad. He's had double-digit uh, double digit touchdowns only once in his career. They just added T.O. You've got Gresham there, so there's a lot more mouths to feed. Uh, and by the way, it's a run-first team. Yeah. Last year, the Bengals 27th in the NFL in terms of pass attempts, and I know they've talked about they want to pass more this year. They've they you know they've they've redesigned their whole offseason to make it a more passing team. But I I don't know I I just don't see Ocho Cinco having the kind of year that he had last year. I think he's a number three fantasy wide receiver, and he's getting drafted as a high end number two. Give me a Chicago guy that you like receiver. De- Devin Aroma should do. A lot of people love Johnny Knox, and I like him too. But I'm Sort of you plant my flag on Devin Aroma should do. I went a few rounds with Johnny last year, and uh, he left me a little cold. <laughs> <laughs> Did he? Well, left me a little cold. Uh, I I can uh, I can certainly understand that. Oakland. In, in Oakland, I like Oakland. Which uh, which uh, which receiver are you on the Lewis uh, Murphy I, I, Yeah, Lewis Murphy with the Chaz Shillings. Um, no Hayward Adrian. Bay mojo for you at all? Or? No. Nothing. No, uh, it hasn't put it together yet. It's too bad. He, I met the guy. He came into the studio and he did our podcast. And really nice guy. And you know, every like, year, well, every you year, you ever find a, that when you meet? Like, I know. I hate meeting people. I, yeah, I always, I like, I naturally well, you hate like people, everybody. Period. But no, I naturally like everybody. So anybody <laughs> I meet, it's going to change my opinion of them. Right. Well, wait a second though. Every no. year in the NFL, there's a team that upgrades from a crap sandwich of quarterback to mediocre to decent. And their receivers all do better. And then, mm-hmm. like, around weeks five, we go, oh, man, we should I, I should have. Of course. Like, they had Jamarcus last. And this year, it seems like even if Jason Campbell is, like, a C plus, maybe there's a couple fantasy receivers out of that group. Could not agree more of what Jason Campbell brings to Oakland. I, I, I'm totally with you on that. And A C plus is the greatest absolutely. thing that's happened to them in five years. Listen, I think Zach Miller's a top 10 fantasy tight end as, as a result of that. Like, I, I think he's going to have a huge year uh, thanks to Jason Campbell. I like Lewis Murphy. I definitely like Chaz Shillings before the injury. Mm. And by the way, another Raider I'll give you, Michael Bush. Oh, yeah. You like Mike. It's McFadden we might have to cut the cord with here. I think so. You know, we'll see. He's he's finally going to get on the field and, and this uh, preseason. This weekend, he's going to play in the preseason game. But uh, really good stat that uh, Keith Lipscomb come up with. My uh, my colleague here. So he's in five career games. Uh, Michael, there's only been five career games where Michael Bush has gotten at least 15 offensive touches. Uh, in those five games, he's averaged 134 yards from scrimmage. If they would just give him the ball, he would do great. I, I you know, I'm a big Michael Bush fan, uh, and so I think he's going to have a very big year. And by the way, just to kind of continue on that point for a second. Yeah. I think this year, I've talked about this a lot uh, all over the place, but I feel like, especially because we're going through these wide receivers and we don't even like some of the quote-unquote elite guys, you need to get one of those guys early, get one of those wide receivers early, and I think you can wait on running back somewhat. If you get a shot of Peterson or whatever, Rice, one of those guys, you're taking it. But there's so many guys in between the 5th and like 8th, ninth, 10th round there's, that I call kind of ugly running backs that no one likes, that no one's excited about, but they're going to have value. There's so many running backs by committee in the NFL now, which means more running backs are getting fantasy points, and it also means that the fantasy points running backs are getting are less. So there's a there's a smaller difference between all the running backs. And there's guys like Michael Bush, um, and then you get into like sort of the, the ugly guys. Like No one likes Clinton Portis this year, which is insane to me. I mean, he's going in the eighth round, right? When you draft Clinton Portis, no one's going to go like, ooh, good pick, right? Which they they'll, might they'll, with Michael Bush. But they'll laugh and they'll talk about the stripper poems. Right. <laughs> right, and the crazy designs. And, and uh, oh, is it 1994 90, already? And, you know, yeah. those kind of jokes. But, listen, Clinton Portis, up until last year, was a first or second round pick. Every year he's been in a draft. Mike Shanahan offense, when Mike Shanahan was coached the Broncos, it's according to Elias, he ran the ball 47% of the time. That was fourth most in the NFL over his coaching career. He ran the ball in the red zone 57% of the time, third most in the NFL. Mike Shanahan runs 
I'm not convinced Willie Parker makes that team. I'm not even convinced Larry Johnson makes the team at this point. You know, I think Ryan Terrain and uh, Keelan Williams are kind of interesting deep, deep league guys, but Clinton Portis is going to be the starting running back on an offense that's going to be better than average. It's not going to be a great offense. It's not going to be the Saints, but it's going to be a decent offense. And to you get that in the sc- eighth round? Well, you just described the strategy that I tried last year. Because I took, I think, from rounds five to ten, I think I went five running backs. I took Sean Moreno, Donald Brown, um, who was the uh, Ahmad Bradshaw, mm-hmm. and tried to hit two. And I hit two, actually. There was one more. Um, oh, I McFadden, he was a bust. Mm-hmm. And then Jonathan Stewart. There you go. And I, I basically went two, two and a half for five because Stewart right. didn't come out until later. And the, the position that killed me was the quarterback running backs. I mean the quarterback receivers. But I do think that strategy works nowadays because you're going to go either two for five or three for five. Right. But even if you go two for five, you have two running backs that are first or second round guys. Exactly. And you can play the, mat, you can play the matchups. Uh, Bradshaw's, yeah. Bradshaw's another guy. Brandon Jacobs is currently going ahead of uh, Bradshaw, and I'd much rather have Ahmad Bradshaw. Yeah. Uh, Jacobs looks terrible. What but about who do you like more between Marion Barber all? is a guy that I think yeah, people he's hate, one. and I think is he's going to get the goal line carries on a very good offense. I think he'll have value there. Ladainian Tomlinson is another guy, and I, and I saw uh, yeah, you I'm tweet this. I'm not taking this. him again. I know. Not I think taking he, him with something like a with a 50th pick and a 50 round and a fan. I just I'm done with him. It's over. I've broken up with him. <laughs> <laughs> what can we do? We can't do anything. Very special hard Mendenhall, knock. Mendenhall, Sean Green, Beanie Wells. Uh, I have it. Uh, I, I I think Sean Green and Mendenhall are a class above Beanie Wells. Okay. I, I, you know, I, I at least Cause a round Because Arizona might be bad. He might be trapped on a he bad might be team bad that can't throw the ball. Tim Hightower is another one of those ugly guys that no one wants. But Tim Hightower is going to play. Uh, he, he's the better pass catcher than Beanie Wells. And Matt Liner can't throw it farther than five yards. I Beanie Wells is, I think it's going to probably be like, you know, 65-35, Beanie Wells to Tim Hightower. But Tim Hightower is going to play and have some value, and I'm with you. That Boy, that Arizona offense just scares me. And without Warner and Bolden there, do teams, you know, try to stop the run a little bit more and concentrate on that? So uh, a lot of people are really high on Beanie Wells. I like him. I like him from a skill standpoint. But from fantasy production, I'm nervous this year. Mendenhall and Sean Green, I think, have monster years this year. Yeah, people like Mendenhall. Well, almost to the to the point that it scares me a little for him. He's he's got a little too much bandwagon action going for somebody who hasn't done a ton. Well, listen, that's what I'm saying. You get to, you know you start getting down there, and it's just like it, it gets ugly quick. You know, I you think he will go third round or higher though. I'm sorry, goes what? I think he I think he'll he'll go second round between eighteen and twenty eight. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty high for go, somebody who's never done it higher. Yeah, he didn't even go higher. A little frightening. Well, he was really, really good. You figure this. My fee, my take on the Steelers this year is that was a pretty bad defense last year. Obviously, injuries to Troy Polamalu and you know all over the yeah. place. It banged up and just they got into a lot of shootouts. I think this year, uh, you know, Polamalu's healthy and they upgraded the uh, the defense somewhat in the in the off season. So I think that's a better defense this year. I think there's going to be less shootouts, and I also think. The loss of Willie Colon on that offensive line hurts them, obviously. Flozell Adam is terrible. But he at least is slightly better at run blocking than he is at pass blocking. Remember, Ben Roethlisberger was tied for the league lead in sacks last year, getting sacked left and right. Um, I feel like I could have made an I, inappropriate I just, like, joke there, right. and I just stayed, I, I stayed away. 400 jokes ran through my head, and I'm just like, I'll just let make, I'll, make, I'll let Bill make one. Bill can we're, get away with it. We were both paralyzed. Yes. Uh, favorite rookie running back. Anyway, so I think they run more. I think they run more and have a more balanced attack. Favorite rookie running back not named Brian Matthews. Job at best. Hmm. People like him, too. Yeah. He's looked really, really good. Obviously, it's a great in, name. You in, know how I feel about names. That's yes, an I know. awesome name. If Chris Johnson was named Job at best. He's uh, the biggest uh, star in the world. Well, the, another classic is Montero Hardesty. I, oh. I just stare at that name when I have nothing to do. I just good look one. at it. It's a, it's a really nice one. We kind of like him too, right? Uh, a little bit. Although I think I think Harrison's better than people think. He's Harrison, by the way, another guy that's you know going late and you know no one likes or you know the, Harrison was really good down the stretch last year. Yeah, and that's like that's the a Fred team that's Jackson. to run. And I'll tell you, Fred Jackson, another guy. Yeah, yeah. I think the C.J. Spiller hype's a little too high. Hmm. I like C.J. Spiller, but I think I like Fred Jackson a lot too. Uh, 
it's a, he's a good running back. You've still got Marshawn Lynch there. He hasn't been traded yet. They're all going to be healthy and taking carries away from each other behind one of the worst offensive lines in football. Uh, I, I think someone's going to reach for C.J. Spiller because they keep seeing that one play, and yeah. I just don't think the production's going to be there where you have to draft him. Remind people not to draft Lawrence Maroney. I think you just did. Okay. If you had to take one Patriots running back, who are you taking? Fred Taylor? I'm that's just not. I'm passing. If if you had to, that's play with my premise here for the. I, w- I mean, I would take Maroney only because it's a contract year, and, and you could talk yourself into if he's ever going to ever be good at any point in his life, it would be this year. Yeah, but in a contract year, is Belichick going to want to give him that opportunity? Ooh, a good point. The yeah. nefarious Bill Belichick. Yeah, I, exactly. I stay away from Pat's running backs, and I also think, well, what's this allows us to switch to quarterbacks? I think Brady is going to have. A monster, monster year because the tight ends are so much better than they were last year. They, they're going to and Welker and Edelman, I think, is going to be better than people think. And I just think he's going to have a lot of options and they're going to throw the ball constantly. Uh, they might, but they haven't. Re- I mean, Tom Brady, other than the crazy fu year, yep, fifty touchdown year, he has never thrown for more than twenty eight touchdown passes in a year. And obviously, twenty eight is a very good number, but I mean, he's not—he's never had like a thirty two, thirty three, thirty touchdown season. I—I I feel like as a Tom Brady, Tom Brady owner last year, I just felt there were a number of games where he's just really inconsistent. Where you're just like, really, that's all you could do against Buffalo? Well, they had a tough schedule, and he had that giant knee brace, and they had an inordinate amount of cold weather games. I felt like I thought it was a little fluky, and he couldn't really. He had a giant knee brace. So this is, the, so this is the year for the weather. You think this is a you're feeling a good weather year for New say, England? Come there's on, there's a, a lot of different factors going into that. And I think it'll be a little bit easier for him this year. I think he's going to be good. I just don't think he's going to be great. I think New England runs more in the red zone than people realize. I think you have to still be a little bit concerned about Welker, and you have to be a little bit concerned about Randy Moss. At how old's Moss now? Thirty-four, At thirty-five. Least. Yeah, their tight ends are going to really make a difference for them. I, I know. Well, I mean, we'll see. I mean, Aaron After Hernandez Ben Watson great. doing yep. his Ben Watson with his Venus de Milo routine. Uh, I think what, anybody who can catch the balls will step up. So, who do you have as the quote-unquote elite quarterbacks? Uh, oh, wait, I, let me do the list again. That was fun. Stop okay. me. Breeze. Yes. Rogers. Yes. Manning. I think that's a tier, by the way. Okay, so tier one is just Breeze and Rogers. Correct. That's it. Yes. So then Manning, Bree, Brady, Schaub, Rivers, Romo. Romo. I would put Rivers outside that. I think Romo, again, I'm all in on the Cowboys. So Romo, uh, Peyton, Brady, and Schaub, I think, are the next tier. Then I if, think, I, if I said that Romo is my number three quarterback, would you laugh at me? Not at all. Okay. I have Romo at four. I have him slightly below Peyton. The only concern with the only concern with Peyton, obviously, is sort of the week sixteen, seventeen thing. But he's yeah. just he's so solid. Um, but uh, yeah, I have uh, I have Romo at four, so I don't think you're crazy at all. Okay, I feel really good about Romo this I, year. I think he, Romo averaged. You know, you're playing with numbers a little bit here, but Romo averaged two and a half fantasy points less a game than Drew Brees. If you take out week seventeen where Drew Brees played. When he didn't play, Tony Romo averaged only two and a half. You know, and you basically you take their total points and you divide it by sixteen, and um, you know there's there's more you can do with it. But basically, Romo had a really good year last year, and and people, unless you owned him, don't really realize it. Kevin Cobb, love Kevin Cobb. Me too. I, I think Cobb and Flat. So that's I think Rivers is his own tier at seven. But then I oh, have, then, okay. And then I have Cobb and Flacco. I think, and those are the two guys that have the potential to take the next step up. You're not throwing Cutler in there. No. Okay. No. See, can I give you my Cutler stat? Here's everyone's all excited about Jay Cutler and Mike Martz, and I just last year, Jay Cutler threw the ball 555 times. He had the fourth most pass attempts in the NFL. He threw more than. Uh, he threw more than Romo. He threw more than Favre. I, I mean, the fourth most in the NFL. Uh, I think he threw more than Brady, too. He, I mean, how many more times can he throw it? 555 times. Here's the other thing. I think Jay Cutler is a poor decision maker. Um, Not necessarily in the same way that Ben Roethlisberger is, but he is a poor decision maker. I, I like when you say things like that, and it could also just transfer to his real life, too. I'm not sure <laughs> what you're talking about. <laughs> exactly. I snuck one in there. Um, luckily, this is a free-flowing discussion that touches yeah, on mature it really subjects. is. It touches on a lot of stuff. Yeah. 
Uh, so anyway, 555 passes. Attempts, yeah. I mean, attempts. people are like, oh, he's going to throw it a ton with Martz. I'm like, dude, look, he threw a ton last year. 26 interceptions last year, 18 the year before. He's a poor decision maker. And the thing about a Martz offense is, is that you take those seven step drops and everyone just goes long, basically. And so he's going to be holding the ball longer and he's going to get pressured, you know, so he's there longer. So you're going to get more pressure on him. And what happens when he gets pressured? He makes poor decisions. I actually think I wouldn't be shocked if he has more than 26 interceptions. I think he's going to get banged up. I would be shocked if he plays all 16 games. I think his fumbles are going to increase. I just, I, listen, I'm killing this guy and I have him as my number 11 quarterback. Um, so I think, I'm, I think Cutler has a, a good statistical year and a good fantasy year. I don't think he has a great fantasy year. And I think, especially if you're in a league that gives heavy penalties for turnovers, I don't have him as a top 10 guy. And I definitely don't think he's in the same class as Flacco or Cobb. I think you'll like this reference and, and you'll be probably the only one, but. Mike Martz is the Brian De Palma of offensive coordinators. Oh, I so, like that. Remember when Brian De Palma for right. years and years was like, oh, it's a Brian De Palma film. Right. And then it, one sucked, and then the next one sucked, and then like the next one sucked. But right. they were still putting him on the poster right. like it was a big deal. I feel that way about Martz. Right. Eventually, and eventually you're like, wow, I, I really have no interest in seeing this movie. Eventually you're like, oh, Just to Kill was 30 years ago. Right. <laughs> exactly. uh, I, I forget. It's, he doesn't make good movies anymore. Right. Um, I like that. That is a Mike good Martz. reference. Thank you. Uh, who do we like in this next group of... Oh, we we didn't talk about McNabb. We both like McNabb, right? Uh, I like McNabb, but I don't think, love him. Don't love him. Have him below Cutler. I think he's going to do. I think the Redskins offensive players all increase their fantasy value. I think Cooley actually has a really nice year. He's looked good this preseason. I think Santana Moss that they've actually been lining up somewhat in the slot some this year too as well. I think they're putting Moss all over the field. I think Moss actually has. I, I'd a, like him as a sleeper. We forgot to talk yes. about him. I think he, he's gonna be good. You just saw. You saw what. You know, Deshaun Jackson did with with uh, with McNabb last year. I think he could be a similar type. Play. He's not Deshaun Jackson, obviously, but kind of Deshaun Jackson light, if you will. Yeah. So I think Moss is a nice sleeper there. I've already talked about Portis. Um, uh, so I like McNabb. I have him at 12. But I like Cobb more than McNabb. Uh, I, I, have Mc, I have Cobb at 8. Andy Reid offense yeah. has been a top 10 passing uh, in terms of attempts and yards. Each of the last six years, and he's he been accurate going back to like high school. Yes. He's completes sixty-five, seventy percent of his passes. Super accurate. Deshaun Jackson, Jeremy Macklin, Brent Selleck, uh, as talented a group of receivers as Andy Reid has ever had at his di- uh, at his disposal. Plus, you've got you know Lashawn McCoy and Mike, Leonard Weaver and Mike Bell in the backfield. I think there's a lot of weapons there. I don't like that backfield from a fantasy perspective, but I like it for Kevin Cobb. Give me a crappy quarterback that you like. Somebody on that cheat sheet I'm looking at, somebody after Roethlisberger. Uh, I have to look at your cheat sheet, but uh, well, uh, Chad Henney, the... is he there? Af- yeah. Is he after Roethlisberger? He's 16. Yeah. yeah, I like Chad Henney this year. 300-yard uh, passing games, three of his final five. Double-digit fantasy points, four of his final five. So end of the year strong. They just added Brandon Marshall. That's got to help. You um, like Alex Smith a tiny bit, and you like Matt Moore a tiny bit. I do like them. Um let me, uh, I bet you don't like Jake DeLome in Cleveland. You know what? I think he'll be okay. I do. I actually like Matt Castle. I think Matt Castle. He's my favorite out of all the crappies. Yeah, and I got he one. He could be half decent. I think he could. I think he could be half decent. And I got one more for you too. It could surprise mm. you. Okay. Kyle Orton. Oh. Kyle Orton had a surprisingly great statistical year last year, except for like the turnovers. Fourteenth best fantasy quarterback last yeah. year, Kyle Orton. 14th, he threw for like thirty eight hundred yards. Fourteenth best, and you know what? This preseason, and I I realize, hey, it's preseason. You're playing vanilla defenses and stuff like that. But he's had seven scoring drives. I'm sorry, he's had seven drives in the preseason. He scored a touchdown on four of them. I just think that's a, especially you know you look at Doomerville going down. That's a defense that's bad. Yeah, I, and I just think they're gonna be down. Moreno banged up, Buckhalter banged up. How effective are they gonna be able to run the ball? I just think that's a team that's gonna have to throw a ton. Bad this division year. too, so they'll be in some high-scoring, crappy absolutely, games. Absolutely. So Kyle Orton, I think, is you know a, a guy that uh, is gonna go super, super late in drafts. That you know you're gonna look up and you're gonna go like, wow, he actually had a pretty good year. If you're in a draft where tight ends count as receivers and not as tight ends. How many guys do you think are really legitimately worth drafting out of the tight ends? Guys that will get you consistently 8 to 12 points a week. 
Uh, Clark, Gates, Selleck, Jermichael Finley, Witten. Uh, I'm down on Gonzalez this year. Um, da- Vernon Davis? Uh, I like Vernon Davis, but if I want, I think his value comes more from scoring. I think, again, you're going to see more Crabtree this year, more Gore. So I, I don't know that Vernon Davis is going to be as much a focal point of the offense as he was last year. I like him. I just don't um, – I don't have him, like, at three. Like, so most people have him at three. I think I have him at, I want to say, five or six. Shanko and Zach Miller? Uh, I like – I like. I don't know that I would want to ever play those guys as wide receivers. Certainly not Shanko. Again, he's a bo- more of a red zone guy. But Zach Miller, certainly. Chris Cooley, I think, is going to be a big part of the offense. Um, if you wanted to take a flyer – this is going to be for second half of the year, Owen Daniels. I think it's going to take a while for him to be healthy and fully ingrained in that offense, but I think he could have a big second half. Where do you stand on the whole, should tight ends count as their own position, or should they be integrated into the receiver pool discussion? I stand on their own position. Yeah, and by the way, too. tight end is really deep this year. I mean, we just went through like eight or nine guys, and we didn't even get to uh, Kellen Winslow right. or Heath Miller, who's going to be more involved with Pittsburgh this year, or John Carlson. Who but I that's why. I, that's almost why you have to integrate them as receivers, because it's not like the old days where Ben Coates was so much better than whoever and then Gates. <laughs> right. And now it's like if you get the twelfth best tight end, are you upset? No, not at all. And that's why yeah. I think you have to wait on. Uh, you should wait on tight ends. But no, almost like to the last. You take your tight end, your kicker with the last two rounds if you're doing a round draft. Yeah, uh, I would do defense kicker as my last two, but I think you can easily wait. I was in a ten team. Uh, mock draft the other night, and I think Chris Cooley went in the 13th round. Zach Miller went like in the 12th. I mean, you can wait on tight ends this year. Is there a defense that you love above any other defense? No. Uh, I saw in this cheat sheet I'm looking at, the Jets are first. Which yeah, me. yeah, and that's it's probably right. They're, they're my number one defense, but I, uh, Christopher Harris actually came up with this great stat. The, since 2005, the consensus number one drafted defense has finished the year as a top 12 fantasy defense only once. Wow. That was uh, the Bears in 06. Other than that, I mean, last year, the number, the top two defenses that were drafted all above everyone else were Pittsburgh and the Giants. I have a little trick for the listeners out there. All right. Don't worry about what the rankings are and all that. Pick who you think is going to be the best team. Or who's going to be a top five team Absolutely. or whatever. Because those are the teams, and those are the teams that get the touchdowns when they're up 31-10 to 10 in the fourth quarter, and they get the special teams TD or the interception TD. Like, who, nobody would have thought the Saints were a good defense last year. Right. But they were a really good team, and good teams get defensive points. No one drafted the 49ers fantasy defense last year, and they finished the year as the number one. I, I think they're going to be a good defense again. I think the Eagles, I think the Packers. Well, I think the but, Falcons are a good example. Like, if you like the Falcons to take that division and have a really good year and go 12 Great schedule them, pick for their Atlanta. defense. Yeah. Great schedule They'll get for the Atlanta. points. They'll end up with them somehow. Listen, you can. I think you can also stream defenses. Basically, if all you did was start the defense against the Rams last year, yeah, you had like a top three fantasy defense. Now, some weeks, obviously, it's not going to be possible to be owned, but... I just think statistically the difference between the number one fantasy defense and the number 10 fantasy defense and the number 12 is not worth it enough. Even if you could predict where they finish, it's not worth it enough to to draft it any, with anything other than like one of your last picks. I've had I've had a couple years where I had two or more defenses and was able to start, you know, position the starts. And it really does pay off if you have two defenses in crappy uh divisions. You know, totally. Like, for instance, you take the Niners, and then you have, um, I don't know, the Falcons. And it, it just, week after week, it seems like you get a nice matchup if you do that. I recommend the double defense. I don't know. Th- I wouldn't recommend the double defense because I don't like wasting a second roster spot on a defense. I, the way I would do it is I just wave them. I just wave those defenses. Oh, you just I don't do care. free agent roulette. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I don't care. Enough. I'll I'll just you know drop them and pick it up and just play the matchups week in week out. I want to see somebody do this. First four picks are wide receivers. <laughs> they need to take a quarterback five, <laughs> running backs or uh, running back six, quarterback seven. So now you can juggle five and seven quarterbacks, the fifth and seventh. Then you go running back eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Then you take quarterbacks over and over again until you take three defenses in a row and a kicker. <laughs> And you just got a spot start the whole season. 
It could work. It could work. I don't know. I'm that so I bored with fantasy football. I wanna, I'm just going to start trying weird things. So it's my resolution for this decade. I like. I like it. Just uh, get I'm crazy. I'm so tired you're, of having Jamal Charles decide my fantasy league. At this point, I'm just going to start trying crazy stuff. You're, you're sort of. You're sort of like a guy in a long marriage, and you're kind of like. Yeah. You know what? I'm. I'm going to take my fantasy league to a key party. Like, honey, will you put this red ball in your mouth? <laughs> right. Exactly. That's <laughs> kind of what you're doing with your fantasy league. I get do you, it. Do you have a favorite kicker? No. All right. Give us your number one all-time sleeper of sleepers sleeper. Oh, wow. I hate that question. For this year. I mean, you're like, one guy. You're Really? That's your sleeper? You, that's got to be a sleeper. He's got to be sound asleep. He's in a coma. He's so asleep. I mean, like, so super deep? Like, I mean, how deep do you want to go? Like, last year, you you would have said Pierre Garçon, and I would have been like, ah, the, wow, that, that, oh, he, he's really asleep. And then he would have been a good sleeper. I, someone of that level of this Okay, year. that deep. Yeah, um, you, I'm going deep. I'm going like round 19. All right. So round 19, I'll give you a couple of guys. I'll give you a couple of guys wide receiver wise. All right. Because um, freaking Damashek took Garcon in like the last round. We all laughed because he'd had about eight beers at that point. He's like, I'll take Garcon. And we're, hey, aha, very funny. And then he ended up starting in like 10 weeks. Okay. I'll give you a couple of like uh, guys that I like in that le- in that level. I don't know that I want to call any one of them my number one guy. So to speak, but so let's call these your. This is your coma sleeper. There you go, uh, Jabbar Gaffney. Again, yeah. you just heard me talk up. Orton had two great games at the end of last year. Someone's going to be the number one wide receiver in Denver. I think they're going to throw a ton, and I think it's going to be Gaffney, who's yeah. looked good in the preseason. Mohamed Masakoy, or Mohamed Masakwa, I should say. Oh, I had a I had a couple cup of coffees with him, and they did not go uh, diarrhea. <laughs> really? Yeah, what? They, had a couple cup of coffees with Masakoya. Like, there, when did he get hot? He had the one great week. Right. Oh, I see what I you're saying. I picked him up. I, he, yeah. The number one pick in my right. uh, free agent thing. Whatever you think of Jake Dome, he's going to be better than what they had last year. I think they have more of a run game to establish the deep ball. Uh, Masakoya, by the way, averaged 18 yards a catch, which was like third best in the NFL. I saw that. Uh, so I think he. I think he's interesting. Unfortunately, uh, all those catches happened in the same week, and then everyone picked him up. Right. Um. I, Listen, you mocked my Nate Burleson. I like Nate. I'm not Burleson. mocking. I told you these are coma guys. I'm right. just. I have Uh-oh. a personal history that that tainted my reaction to that pick. Uh, I think Mike Williams in Tampa Bay has been real interesting. I think Nate Washington in Tennessee is interesting. Oh, haven't we all gone around the block with him? <laughs> haven't we all bit. gone on one date with Nate Washington? A little bit. A little He's bit. Been on I'm, everyone's team. I'm going back for seconds with Nate Washington. All right. Um, uh, he's looked good. Jacoby Jones. Absolutely love in Houston. I think he's like a he's really really good. Another great name who might be tainting your uh, your feelings. Six it's touchdowns. Nice name. Six touchdowns last year, and you know that's an offense obviously that's that's fantastic. Matt Schaub tied for the NFL league last year with uh, lead with three hundred nine three hundred yard passing games. Is Jacoby their number two or their number three? Right now he's number three. Walters Walters still right. starting, but I think Jones is ultimately I think talent wins out. Jones is the better. A uh, guy. They've said that Jones has been pushing Walter for that number two spot. Um, so you know, for last round guys, I like it. Uh, a, a couple of running backs, if you want. Uh, Bernard Scott in Cincinnati, I think, has to be the number one handcuff. Once you get past all the quote running back by committees, so I really like Bernard Scott a lot. I think Leon Washington in Seattle is interesting. I'm still a four set believer, but I think Le- Leon Washington's kind of interesting. I mentioned the Washington guys already. Um, yeah, it's about, uh, uh, oh, and, uh, and Legadoon and A in, uh, San Diego, actually, like him there, too. There's no fourth or fifth round running back who people feel like might sneak into somebody and all of a sudden he's getting points. It seems to happen every year. Fred Taylor. Listen, there no, was I'm talking six, about yeah, rookies. Hey, oh, rookies. Yeah. Um, uh, but again, I think this year there's it's all those guys, it's all the Fred Taylors of the world that you're just like, ugh, you know. Yeah. But then you're going to look up and Fred Taylor's going to have six, seven touchdowns this year. He'll definitely be picked up. There'll be a Fred Taylor run on the free agent wire in like week four or five for one week. Kind of like some random three touchdown game against the Bills or something. <laughs> um, all right, well that all um, sounds oh, good. Well, the, the, um, and I, I'm I apologize. I have no idea why I can't. I, I'm having a complete brain. Uh, the the kid in Tampa Bay the the rookie in Tampa Bay that uh, is going to back up Cadillac Williams now that's oh. a, and I I I'm annoyed that I can't uh, 
I can't remember him either. I can't remember his name. Now it's mortal lock that he's going to be great. I mean, you had me at backing up Cadillac Williams. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bonus. Give me the guy that you hate the most out of everybody. Oh, uh, Kareem Huggins, he's, by the way. Kareem Huggins. People are screaming at the podcast going, Kareem Huggins, Kareem Huggins, Kareem Huggins. Sorry. That, that's the guy there. And like I, I, I mentioned. kind of a strong name. Uh-huh. I like um, I like Arian Foster, too, by the way, in Houston. I'm, the, I'm, done, do. I'm done being taunted by the Texans running backs. <laughs> They can they can all go to hell. Well, here's the thing though. They had Slayton returning kicks last week. If there's not a bigger like you know screw you to a running yeah. back with injury history, then you know hey why don't you go return kicks? My favorite sleeper heading into this preseason was Ben Tate. Yeah, I was gonna take him like I, I was gonna take him three rounds too early in one draft and spend eight dollars too much a month in the other, and uh, and he broke his ankle. Give me the guy you hate the most. Hate the most is strong. Uh, well, you do the love hate thing. I do do the love hate thing. You play up the love hate. I gimmick. do play up the lot. Uh, so yeah, no, no, no. It's uh, out there. Well, we've talked about some of them. I mean, I'm I'm not a big Chad Ochocinco guy. I'm not. No, a big it's got to be the Jackson most. Guy. Your least favorite guy, the one that you'll have the most sarcastic snicker when he goes in the draft. With Reggie Wayne is a guy that I, you know. Again, I'm I'm oh. down on him as a as a second round pick. How about Matt Ryan? Here's another guy. I, the people love Matt Ryan for some reason. Yeah. Uh, I don't see a couple good stats on Matt Ryan. Uh, last year, Matt Ryan, 20th in the NFL, in uh, uh, 20th of, in terms of red zone pass attempts. 20th in the NFL in red zone pass attempts. 23rd in terms of completions of 20 plus yards. So basically, he's not throwing it when he's in close, and he's not throwing it deep. Not a good combo. Not a good combo. Yeah, I, I better real life. I, that's a run first team. He's a better real life quarterback than fantasy quarterback. All right, well, it's time for us to make an announcement. Yes, sir. So next week you're coming back. I'm so excited about this. I, I don't know that I've been more excited for something that I've done on ESPN ever, which is next sad. Week, next week, uh, I think Tuesday. Okay. Joe Mead, are you awake? Yeah, I'm awake. What day is September 2nd? September 2nd. Is that a... Sounds like a Thursday. You're right. It's a Thursday. Next week, Thursday, September 2nd, 2010, is the date, 90210. Correct. And that is it. Barry and I have decided that we're going to hand out the 90210 awards. Not new 90210. No, we're no, no. about the old one, the washed up one, the one that... Uh, right. I, I, Old school, I, I, classic 90210. The one that they show on SoapNet, the one that right now they're in the wheelhouse of season five, and I've had a couple of tweets about it, and uh, another dramatic announcement for me. Yeah. After this podcast, I'm retiring on the 90210 references from my columns. This is it. Wow. I'm walking away. Yeah. The show premiered 20 years ago. Its heyday <laughs> was 15 years ago. I don't want to be that guy who's referencing... Things that happened 38 years ago. My kingdom for Vegas to put a line on the over under of when no, you break. Not that. doing it. I'm, oh, I'm retiring. I, I I'm would walking put my away. House on that. Oh. Much like when Jordan walked away from basketball, <laughs> Jim Brown walked Which away nine? from football. I'm walking away from that to an L. But not before we have our gala, hour and a half long, Nano to an <laughs> awards that we've been working on. I know. And let me tell you something. If you guys claim that you're not going to listen to this, I don't believe you. No. It's going to be huge. It's going to be It's huge. the only day ever that ever. it's 90210. Right. How do we not do a one and a half hour podcast? Absolutely. I can't work. So all the awards and, and all the good. Uh, do you want to take listener suggestions on categories or no? You know what? If you guys, I'll just give you an example of, of one type of award. I don't want to, I don't want to spoil any right. of it. Um, for example, I'm looking at it. Um, Biggest plot stretch ever. That's an award category. <laughs> right. Um, least deserving of ever being in the opening credits. That's I like gonna that be a one. Category. So we're going to have like 20 of those. It's not just going to be favorite character and all that. We're, we're, di- we're diving so deep into this, it's almost like we're performing surgery on the show. Oh, yeah. The- and uh, So if you have any really obscure categories that you want us to tackle, feel free. But we've, unfortunately, already spent some time on this, <laughs> texting back and forth. <laughs> Great. I, don't know, I was sitting there Saturday night, and this person says, what are you doing? I said, texting 90210 category ideas. <laughs> what? <laughs> Listen, I'm going all out. I was this cracking is a bash. up. 
Yeah. Remember uh, in the I'm end so of season excited. six when the prince, when he threw the uh, 21st bat- birthday Sanders. party for Steve Sanders, it was on a yacht. They had, I think, the Goo Goo Dolls. It was totally overboard. <laughs> You're like, why did the prince do why? Steve Sanders. Like, are you running out of yacht? This is the equivalent, the podcast equivalent of the 21st birthday party. Right. For and where you were like, come on. It's Steve so Sanders over the top. has been 21 for 10 years now. I just can't wait for the uh, for my editor's reaction when I tell them that the box that I have on the main page will be leading with a two-part 90210 <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> They'll be like, really? really? Joe Mead, how do you feel about this? I feel great about that. Are you, are you, how would you rate your excitement from 1 to 10? Uh, about a 7. Uh, wait till you hear it. It's going to go up to a 10. I'm telling you. Listen, they, Bill you, and I they, have been texting for like a week now on this thing. It's like... First of all, this idea has never been in better hands, ever. <laughs> They've never, to, if, they, if we were ever put on earth to do one podcast, it's this one. I completely agree. Um, I remember when I had my old website. So this, I'm talking about like a three-year stretch when I used to do the daily links every morning. And this was during the days before high-speed wireless, where it actually, you, di- you clicked on a link and you had to sit there and wait 20 seconds for it to load. And I would have the three hour, three episode 90210 marathon on in the background just so I was bored as I waited for the links to download. And you know, it probably takes like four months to run through the cycle of the entire series. Right. So I probably ran that cycle back like six times. Wow. You, yeah. I, I mean, you, you've definitely watched it. Most of my 90210 knowledge just comes from having watched it the original run. I haven't watched many reruns. But yeah, I see, I have that rerun, the rerun stretch where I was kind of half watching, but at the same time absorbing everything. That's where it pushed me to another level of uh, absurdity. Uh, I, I've watched every single episode. I've seen every episode of that show, and I, there's very few. I don't think there's any other show I can say that about. Well, I'll tell you what. They wrapped up uh, the season five season finale tonight. Oh, yeah? Or today on SoapNet, and, uh, and season six starts, and, and Dylan's about to uh, get married and then tragically lose his wife, and Kelly's <laughs> about to turn into a co-cord. Don't think I'm that excited about it. Uh, it's fantastic. He's in the, he's in the rain, and uh, oh, oh, believe me. Ah! Uh, <laughs> no! Poor Did I ever Dylan. tell you that, uh, on that when I worked on Kimmel's show, we had Luke Perry as a guest, and he was an awesome guy. We were drinking right. afterwards with him, me and another writer, Tony, and we got him to reenact his reaction to that uh, <laughs> when Jack McKay's car blew up. In the green room, and everybody was looking. It was it was one of the highlights I had on that show. Of course, you you're referring of course the first time Jack McKay's car. The first, well, now see we we this is one caveat that we're doing for the awards. After Brandon leaves, nothing else happened. No, we're not counting anything else that happened in the series. I disagree. I I throw that was the uh, it jumped the shark forty times. Of course, it, we have it, to it, talk about that. The shark was murdered when Brandon if, left. If there we, was no shark to jump. If we don't. This, if we if we if we draw a line in the sand there, then we can't get into stuff like Donna and David as their own World War II grandparents, whatever that was. No, that I think that was before. Brandon no, that left. was like the second to last year or something right, like well, that. That was terrible. We'll, we'll have some calls. We'll have, we'll have some well, we, with some judgment calls. Can't get into we can't get into I choose me, the greatest line of dialogue ever. No, I on choose television. me was way before Brandon left. I thought that was when he, she came back. No, no, no. That was that was uh, that was season five. I'll help you out with this uh, stuff. Um, no, listen, believe me, I'm, 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 I actually, I actually, believe it or not, started taping some to do, like, do some, uh, go back and and br- and brush up. Believe me, I'm. How great is it that it's nine oh two one oh? I I cannot be more excited. I'm surprised there aren't more like parties and you know things going on, like celebrations. It's a Thursday night. I fully expect everyone in college to be partying and dressing up like nine oh two one oh characters. Not just college kids. On. Everyone should be. We are, and, uh, and don't think we're not. Deeply, deeply delving into the career of one Ray Pruitt. <laughs> deeply. Bill, I've asked you once, I've asked you a million times. How do you talk to an angel? <laughs> Joe, Joe Mead, we might have to get Jamie Walters on. <laughs> okay. Can we get, you think we can get him on right at, right at the end? We give, I'd like to give him the career achievement as my favorite 90210 character ever. Oh, wow. Really? I loved you know, him. I, I, I would be you, abusive, uh, yeah, the, Dirt poor. He's just he was such a polarizing character, and it actually he left the show, when and his career Donna was never the, stairs, the same. He, when he threw Donna down the stairs, did you cheer? Because I got to be honest, I sort of did. <laughs> he gave it a small fist pump. Yeah, Donna was so annoying. Was such he was an so, annoying character, but he was so good at that character that he could not have a career afterwards because yes. people blamed him for throwing Donna down the stairs. That's a great character. <laughs> that's what, You've given up your career to play this character. Uh, that's, that's, He's like, no, no, I'm not a wife beater in real life. I right. swear to God, that is what ruined him. 
there's uh, a uh, some of his songs still hold up, and I'm not I'm not going to be ashamed to admit two of them are on my iPod. <laughs> <laughs> See if you can get the clearance rights to play those. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think uh, anyone's suing us for playing no. uh, "Hold On" by Jamie Walters. All right, so stay tuned for that next week. Yes. The nine hundred two one zero podcast on 90210 and after that i'm retiring on 90210 references matthew berry plug something uh fantasy football for free free live scoring auction draft capabilities which you love watch lists fully customizable everything you need it's all free on espn.com even if you don't have a league you can join a a public league and by the way new this year we have an offline draft tool so basically you know sometimes you're like you want to do your draft in person with everyone yeah. Go to ESPN.com and you can download this program just for your computer, so and you don't have to be connected to the internet. That will that will save everyone's picks, and then you when you get back on the internet, you just hit a button and boom, it uploads it into your league. Wow, that's a good idea. Yeah, like so, that idea. Yeah, so the guys came up with that. That's uh, that's really good. Uh, follow me on Twitter, Matthew Berry TMR, and listen to uh, Nate and uh, Nate and I's fantasy focused podcast where we do this every single day. It's an award-winning one. It is two-time award-winning. Two-time award-winning. When when is that award show coming up again? Where you guys barrage that guy until he gives you the, the award for 2010? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I have to talk to Pod Vader. I'm All sure right. he's got keep, it circled. Keep me keep me posted on that. We will absolutely. Matthew do that. Barry, I will talk to you in exactly eight days on nine oh two one oh. Very excited. See ya. Take care. Target the sun off. Whoa. Thank you for downloading the BS Report with Bill Simmons. Too much fun. Check out more podcasts at the iTunes Music Store or at PodCenter at ESPNRadio.com. Peace out.